How do you feel, American? Nah, <laughs> I've always been taught we were Indian, we were Lakota first before we were anything else, before we were Christian, before we were American. Thank you so much. We actually don't believe in the word Native American because Native American it also has the word American in it. They took everything from us. America is built on stolen lands. America is a stolen country. Shalom, brothers and sisters. My name is Brother Yaiqua from One Nation, One Power. All praise and glory to the Most High Haya. His son's name is Shia. You know, I just did this quick video. This is show my this is show our people, right? You know, it's time to wake up. It's high time to wake up. I pray that the most high wakes up all my brothers and sisters from the east coast to the west coast to the north and south. You know, I know it's been a while since I did a video, but I can't do a video if it's not 
from the Most High. You know, so I, I just waited for him to put the spirit on me to do it. But I know it's been a while. He's been nagging at me to do it. And I have to do it. So all glory goes to the Most High. And uh, hopefully you like this song, man. Because I tell you what. When my wife found this song and she shared it with me. Man, it, it touched my spirit. And like it will touch your spirit. Because you know why? Because the very the very things that they are saying is the same thing that we teach on the, on the streets, on the internet. Telling our people to wake up. To come out of her, my people. To separate yourself from her. From Babylon. Because America is not a great country. It never has been. And it will never, never will be. So you can stop saying God bless America. Because you know why? Because God is not blessing America. Amos chapter 9 and 8 talks about a sinful kingdom. You know. And the Most High is going to bring judgment on that sinful kingdom. Because his eyes are upon that sinful kingdom. You know. And he said he'll destroy it from the face of the earth. So. America got no place to hide, you know, and the atrocity that happened to our people, you know, being built upon slavery and genocide of the native, of the indigenous people, America is going to get what it deserves, you know, so, and as you see at the very, at the very beginning of this um, video, you see these uh, children pledging allegiance to the flag in the, the Nay language out here in, um, in, a uh, Dilcon, I think it is, or either uh, Indian Wells. And, you know, it, it's a sad thing, man, because when you think about it, that's how destroyed we have become. That's how, that's how quickly we forget, right? How we forget what has happened to our people. You know, it is sad to say, man, but then there are some people, indigenous people, mothers and fathers, aunts and uncles, that will look at that and say, wow, this is a wonderful thing that, that they're doing. We were able to use our language, okay, and, and to, to sing the national anthem or either to uh, pledge allegiance to the flag. And they think it's a good thing. But I tell you what, how can it be a good thing, okay, if this nation was a nation that came upon our people and killed us, raped us, and robbed us? And now we're using the spirit of our people, especially those little kids, you know, using their spirit to hold this nation in their power. All right. God said he's already going to destroy the sinful kingdom. All right. Re Revelations chapter 13 and 9 and 10, it talks about if you have ears to hear. All right. Let him hear. Right. If you have if any man have an ear, let him hear. It says that he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. It says here is the patience and the faith of the saint. So this nation led people into captivity. This nation killed people with the sword. Alright? So we got to stop using our spirit and keeping this system in power. You know, you got to wake up to the truth, man. And and that's the beautiful thing, man. The the people who made this song, all right. I don't know if they they are Israelites, if they have been exposed to the truth or anything like that. It was made like four years ago, and which is a, and it's a powerful thing because you know why? Because when you read of Joel chapter two and twenty eight, it talks about how he's going to pour his spirit upon all flesh, upon his sons and daughters, upon the the old man, upon you know. And, and upon the, the servants and handmaidens, upon all flesh, you know, and that's his spirit right now. His spirit is the one that's crying out to his people, telling them to wake up. And I'm talking about us, indigenous people, the ones that call themselves American Indian, Indian, or whatever, okay? But this place is going to get what it deserves. When you read in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 20 and 21, it says, come, my people, enter into my chamber and shut thy door about thee. Hide thyself as if it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. All right. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish. The Lord cometh out of his 
place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquities, the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So there you go. The, when you read in Revelations when it talks about the blood cries out, it, it, that's what it says right here that the earth will, you know, disclose, discover the blood, you know, our blood, the blood of the 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 Israelites, all right, God's chosen people, because He will not cover the slains no more. You know, the even the earth is going to tell tell the Most High about this sinful kingdom. And and you see, this is this is why. You now I was raised up traditional, man. So. What 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 you see right here, you know, I I didn't believe in pledging allegiance to the flag even when I was a kid, man. You know, and I was like the only one in the whole class, where every out everybody else they pledge allegiance to the flag, but I wouldn't want to. And then when the other children seen me, all right, the other the other um, Native American children when they seen me, they wanted to, you know, to to do what I was doing. But guess what? The teacher wouldn't let them. They're like, no, you got to pledge allegiance to the flag because you know why? Because you've been pledging allegiance to the flag this whole time. You know, and that's and that's a sick thing. Right now, it's the same way for our brothers and sisters out there. Because we're bringing forth this truth. You are so stuck in mud that you cannot let this go. You know, I'm not saying I'm not saying this to uh, be disrespectful to our, our elders who fought in World War One, World War Two, or any of the wars, all right, that actually fought for our people. I'm saying our people, all right? I'm not saying for America, you know? I'm just saying for people. Because this is, there's a different, man. Our people never fought a war because of a flag, because of an idea, or because of uh, oil, you know, our people fought to preserve the way of life, you know, and fighting in America's army, you know, yeah, it, it's a thin line. But then we have some elders that uh, refuse to be drafted, you know, and I'm going to do a video on that. There was an elder who refused to, um, to be drafted. And to go and fight in, in the war and guess what happened to him he was put in prison for seven years just because he was practicing what he believed he was a Hopi and he believed that Hopi are not supposed to go out there and fight a war and kill innocent people God's people because this is this is his word he says I'm not supposed to go out there and kill you know God's creation that's not what a Hopi is supposed to do we're supposed to take care of God's creation. And he got put in prison for that. You know what I'm saying? If you, and that's the thing, man. That's that's I can respect him for that. You know, even even though, you know, a lot of people say, well, he was probably scared, this and that, but nah. I I mean, serving seven years for for your belief, all praise and glory, man. But you know, with that. I just want to do this quick video and and get off there because these uh these sisters right here they you know they said it all you know and it's their word not my words you know and they're telling you not to forget about slavery about genocide about the murder the rape and and all that the boarding schools because you know why because God's God didn't forget man Galatians seven and nine I mean six and seven right. Galatians, let's get that real quick, man. Six and seven, be not deceived. God is not mock. For whatever a man soweth, that shall also reap. All right? So there we go. They're going to reap what they have sowed. You know, and we all use Deuteronomy 28. And if uh, anybody that's new to the channel, that's new to this, I suggest you read Deuteronomy 28. Because you will hear a lot of Israelites out there bringing forth Deuteronomy 28. And I have done some, um, previous video using Deuteronomy 28. You know, and we do fit these curses, man. Don't let anybody that comes on this channel 
or makes a comment, you know, about about you know you are not the children of Israel. You're heathens. You come from Asia, or you are mongoloid. You know that's just that's that's just ignorance, man. All right, that's just ignorance. Talking about the years, about uh, you know, the Bible's only four thousand years old. You know, we the indigenous people have been in America for over twenty-seven thousand years. You know, this and that. But guess what? Where are they getting that information from? The same white man, right? The same white man that gave them this flag, that lied to them, that has put them in schools, boarding school, public school, and taught them this lie. Now I don't use, okay. I'm not saying it's bad or anything like that, but I don't use really I don't really use the dates, man. I use scriptures and prophecies because those those two things, scriptures and prophecies, are histories or art. Okay, a prophecy that is fulfilled is history already passed. You know what I mean? And that's our history. The prophecies. Alright? When when a prophecy comes to fulfillment, yeah, it's it's our history, and we know that the Hopi people has many prophecies. We know that not only the Hopi people were prophets, because there were many other indigenous people out there that were prophesying. The Lakota people, they had the ability to prophesy. Many of the the nations, the five hundred nations. I'm just gonna go say it out there like that. The five hundred nations. They had the ability to prophesy. You know? So, there we go. You know, there's a lot going off. But, oh, well, man. But, uh, I just want to bring that forth. And that just shows us that we are the children of Israel. You know, because when you, when you think about it, who gives that spirit to a person to say something out of the ordinary, you know, and it comes to pass? Who does that? Only God. Only God can give that spirit to his people so that something will come to pass and that they will not consider to be, you know, crazy or foolish because the Most High is behind that prophecy, behind that word. When you look at Amos 2 and 11, it says, I will raise up out of your sons for prophets and out of your young men, Nazarites. Is it is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, says the Lord? For that's what the Most High has done. He raised up out of our young men, out of our sons, all right, to be prophets and Nazarites. All right, and even, well, I'm going to read this next verse, verse 12. But ye gave the Nazarite wine to drink, all right? Talking about you gave the, the, the people... You know, Nazarite has a vow of not supposed to drink anything from the vine, you know. But it says that you gave them wine to drink, so they're polluted. And that's what has happened to our people. Our people at the very beginning, you know, had a, you know, we really didn't involve ourselves with alcohol. Because when we seen what alcohol was doing to our people, we tried to stay away from it. But now, you see all these, all these indigenous people out on the streets, man. You know, not only indigenous, but I'm talking about the so-called Africans, the so-called Mexicans. And you only see those, these three um, kinds of people out there on the streets getting drunk, being drunk, you know. And it says, and commanded the prophets, the prophets saying, prophesy not. So, there we go. Even NASA, you know, even NASA will use some of the Hopi prophecies to explain the phenomena out in the sky, you know, they will. Why would NASA or Unite or America will come to the indigenous people and ask them about certain things that are happening out in in space or in the world? Why would they come to the indigenous people if we're just savages, you know, mindless savages, you know, and ask us what's going on, or is there anything in your stories or there anything in, in your legends about what's happening right now, you know? That don't make no sense. Why are they coming to us? And why are they coming to us wanting us to to uh, use our spirit, right? Because our spirit is, is holy. Our spirit is powerful. And using our spirit to keep that, keep that flag, to keep the American system in its power. Now, I don't understand that. 
And one thing else I don't understand. Okay, the same language, and I'm speaking out of a, a traditional mindset, okay? So don't, don't get it twisted. Why is that we're going to use our language, which the Most High has given us, all right, to perform all these ceremonies, these traditions, you know, and, and speak to our children good words, you know, and to, to recite different uh, chants, you know, in, 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 the, in the environment so that everything can be at peace, all right? Why is it that we're going to use that same language that we practice in our traditions, you know, in, in our ceremonies year after year and still use that same language to pledge allegiance to the flag and to sing the national anthem, you know? When we had this mindset of our language being special that we were only supposed to, you know, speak good words, you know, to uh, speak life into the into the to, to creation around us, you know, to to sing songs for the healing of our brothers and sisters, you know, if 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 that was our mindset, how is it now that we're using that that same special language, that purified language, and using it to keep that flag and to keep America in power, all right, how can we do that? That American flag does not represent freedom. When, I, when you look up freedom in the dictionary, you don't see American flag there, all right? When you, when you look at, I mean, how can, how can we do that? I mean, it just don't make no sense, you know? It's just like, it's the same thing with God bless America. How can we say that? How can we say God bless America when we know that America is not blessed? You know, America was not even America was not even blessed, you know, before the encountering of the indigenous people. You know, America is it's, it's a cursed country. It's a sinful kingdom. It's um, it's a place of of abomination. Look at what's going on all around us. You know, you got homosexuals. You got sodomites. You know, you got you got children being killed. You know, you got children being stolen. You know, you got children being missing. You got our indigenous sisters out there being raped, and no, and nothing gets solved. It's open case, open case murders and homicides on the reservation. You know, you know, our people losing land left and right, man. You know, this place has no respect for our 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 our, our ways and our belief. You know, America don't. And how are we going to continue to say the Pledge of Allegiance, especially in our language, man? You know, that's worse. That's worse than washing your mouth out with soap. You know, the Bible talks about how you know how can you know you know bitter water comes out of uh, fresh water. You know, it doesn't. You know, how can we speak good things but yet speak curses? You know, or cast out curses? You know, it don't make no sense. So I just want to go ahead and bring that out. You know, a short video. I didn't want to talk too much. But, uh, you know, of course, Most High puts a spirit on me. And I just want to say a lot of things, man. Because, you know, it's time for our people to wake up, man. And like I said before, the Bible's not a white man's book. It never has been and never will be. You know, yes, the mo yes, they brought the Bible to us. But still yet, you know, it's not their book. They only stole the book. You know, they made it theirs, just like they stole this land and made it theirs. You know, you should see that pattern, man. They stole the, the Bible or the scriptures from the Israelites, all right, that were in Judea, all right, when the Romans came there, conquered Judea. They took the Bible, you know, because they didn't have no laws and statutes of their own that they can actually consider themselves to be uh, righteous people or anything like that. So they took it, made it their own, and brought it to us. And the same thing with America or this place Turtle Island or Hopi Land you know people call it Turtle Island you know mostly up there in the north and the east coast you know but if you come down to south winds the Hopi will call this Hopi Land you know all the way from uh, Alaska all the way down to South America they'll call this whole place Hopi Land a peaceful land you know but still yet these uh, these people came stole this land made it theirs and now they're just giving it away gave it to china russia you know that's their pattern man these they took the bible made it theirs and they're making it seem like it's everybody else but it's not 
now America the same way, like I said. They stole this land, and now everybody can come here. But now you got people like Trump, you know, make America great, how America was never great, you know? It will never will be. The Most High considered to be a sinful kingdom. It always will be. It will be a city made. It will be a city of... Um, It'll be a city of blood. You know, our our ancestors are killed and murdered and raped all around this place, man. So and and their blood is crying out to the most high. Their blood is crying out to the most high saying, How long, O Lord, will you not avenge us upon them that dwell on the face of the earth? You know, it's not the white man's blood crying out. You know? Well, maybe. You know, I'm not gonna say it's not, because if they were done unrighteously. And their blood cries out, yeah, the Most High is going to hear it, you know. Even there was a law, even for the Israelites, not not to uh, how say how it says to uh, I forgot what it says, but it says uh, you know, not to oppress the, the widows or the strangers, you know, or the fatherless within thy gates, because when they cry out, I will hear them and I will punish you. Right? See, that's how we, the children of Israel, was supposed to be a, a king and a priest, a, a, a people that show humility, all right, that were able to govern righteously, right? We were supposed to govern righteously, and that's why that law was given unto us, man. Even though we know that the stranger was not our people, you know, was not out of the same loins, out of the same lineage, but still yet, we had to have that humility, right? To govern them rightfully and righteously, just so that we can be, you know, just so we can we can be like the Most High and be blameless, having righteous judgment, you know. And this this other way, I don't know, man. It don't make sense to me, but oh well. And I can say that's that was why I, that's how I was raised up too, you know, being raised up traditional, you know. It always told us to uh, have respect for God for the Creator's creation. You know, even though it's a, a small ant to a plant, to a tree, or to a white man, to a black man, to a Chinese man, whatever. To have respect, you know, to show humility, because it is a creation. A creation from the creator, alright? The Bible tells us, you know, to be, uh, you know, to, um, what is it, um, be mindful that you might be entertaining an uh, angel, you know, because our forefathers had, you know. So we don't know. We don't know what the Most High is doing, you know, to see whether or not we are we are practicing what He has commanded us to do. But with that, I just want to say Shalom. My name is Brother Yaiqua from One Nation, One Power. All praise and glory to the Most High Ahaya and His Son's name is Shia. And also, I just want to add this. We know, you know, I got, you know, we're, we're starting to do a lot of live uh, live streams. You know, you can go to Brother Ayil. He does uh, a lot of live um, live stream. You know, on YouTube. And also my brother Kadash, you know, he, he's starting to do live, you know, and uh, we got, we got, you know, I get on there and we go live together. And not only me, but also we got a brother from uh, from New York, you know, brother Matthew, you know, which is a powerful brother, man. I mean, watching his brother grow, you know, from from two three years, you know, being on a conference call on the phone when I was working in the tire shop, you know, having the headphones on and just listening, listening in, reading for Kadash, and man, this brother has grown, man. I mean. When you keep the laws, you will learn the Bible, and you will learn this. You will learn to discern the spirit, you know, the spirit in the brothers and sisters that they are the children of God, you know. And this brother, he's, he's he has definitely, you know, he definitely learned a lot, and he definitely has the spirit of the Most High, and he has compassion. He has, he, I mean, he shows a lot of. I mean, he has, he gives a lot of alms, man, you know. My brother said that, Kudash said that, and I'm just saying it too, man, because I could see it. You know, brother has heart, and just like, just like the brothers and sisters. I mean, like, like you read in the Bible, man. You know, how can how can Solomon give a thousand ox, you know, and so many so many sheep, you know, to the Most High, and not only that, but you know, for the food on his table for those that don't have, you know, for for like the widows and, and the orphans, man, to come eat. You know, and how many of us do that? You know, right now we're in captivity. Yeah, you know, I don't got no money to do that. I mean, we live paycheck by paycheck, man. We're just one check from being homeless. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it. I mean, 
I can't. I mean, I, I, I never left them. I, like you say, I tried, but I, I never received it. You know, I never received food stamps or anything like that because of my record. You know, I tried because I, and you know, I was desperate at that time, but it never happened for us. You know, so we had to work. You know, I had to work hard and to feed and provide for my family. You know, and of course, many of you brothers and sisters out there are doing that. You know, but um, I pray that the Most High give you strength to continue to do that. To feed and provide for your family, because if a man don't work, he don't deserve to eat, man. And that's why our brother, that's what our brother Ayo always tells us, you know, get a job, man. So no whole brew, no whole bro Hebrews, you know. But all right, man. I just want to go ahead and say that. But you know, check out those channels. You know, all praise and glory to the Most High. And um, I hopefully I'll do another video shortly. But I just want to do this real quick and put it up there so you guys can see it. And glory to the Most High. So I want.